thousands of students in Jersey City will start class today from the comfort of their own homes. Jersey City Mayor Stephen Phillip joining us this morning to explain why students may not be back in the classroom until mid-November. Good morning to you, Mr. Mayor. How you doing? Good morning. I'm doing well. Good to see you this morning. So before we start discuss the start of the school year, I want to talk about Jersey City as a whole. Nearly 7,000 yeah. COVID cases. Any number of new cases that are concerning to you? Is there a spike? No, uh, we had a really good August. We've gone from, you know, close to 1,000 cases per month down to about 250 cases in August. And uh, our fatalities in August were five, um, which is down from several hundred. So that's a positive trend. Uh, we'll get the numbers around what happened on Labor Day mid-month, and we'll have a better look into that. But the trend is in a good direction. And then our contact tracing seems to pick up that most of the cases, or a little bit more than half, are coming from people that traveled out of state and then come back into New Jersey or Jersey City and then right. don't quarantine. So, so no, so no, real, big, no real test yet to see if indoor dining or indoor openings of certain businesses ha had any impact. No, it'll be the uh, middle of the month before we have a good picture of that. So we're going to track it and uh, we're being cautious, but things yeah. look okay so far. All right, Mr. Mayor, let's talk about the Georgia City School Board. They voted yeah. last month to go 100% remote for the start of the school year. I know every district in New Jersey is different, but we're hearing that many students still don't have the technology they need to connect yeah. to class, right? That seems to be an issue overall. What's being done about that in the city? <laughs> Yeah, so there's a roughly 3,000 Chromebooks that uh, the Board of Education is short, which obviously has a huge impact on uh, children's ability to engage properly. Um, they've ordered additional ones. There's a delay on it. Uh, we're going to work with the library system, some of the CARES funding, some of the city funding, and then try to find out, uh, find resources in order to kind of solve it in the interim. Yeah. But, you know, there's no perfect solution here, as you know, and we're all trying to kind of make the best of a really tough, tough situation. What, um, you said there's a delay. Is it true that some of these devices won't arrive until mid-October? Yeah, that, that, that's right. So they ordered them in um, early August, and they're saying that uh, mid to end of October is when they'd have the dates. And right now the Board of Education is saying that they want to go remote uh, into November. So, um, you know, it's a fluid situation, but what are those kids uh, to it's do? definitely not ideal. Yeah, so, so, so right now we're trying to work with the library system. We're working with the CARES funding to see if we could obtain some additional uh, Chromebooks through some other resources. Um, and then we're working with parents on how to share resources that are, exist there. So um, it's not perfect and it's not ideal. And I'm kind of disappointed in it, yeah. to be honest with you, but it is what it is today. And, you know, that's it's hard because going to a library kind of defeats the purpose of the remote learning overall because now you're actually physically going somewhere, right? Um, but I know it's, yeah. it's not... Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, so what we've tried to do on the city side is we've given all of our employees 100% uh, the option to be 100% remote working, um, recognizing the fact that child care is difficult and that the schools were taking the steps of uh, making it 100% remote. So we're trying to, uh, you know, be thoughtful on the city side where we can to make sure that parents have the options that they need. But um, on the school side, there is no perfect solution right now. Yeah. And, you know, it is frustrating. We hear that from a lot of parents and that they're disappointed with the Board of Education on that front. And for parents who are saying, okay, I have to now manage my daily work life from home, plus the idea of taking care of my child and remote learning at the same time, Jersey City as a whole taking some steps now to help parents who are saying, my goodness, I need help managing both of these things. What are you doing? Yeah, so uh, all of our 3,000 employees have the option to work remotely. Uh, we've contracted with some software to uh, make sure that people are working from home. We've set kind of a whole structure on accountability to make sure that there is a work product that we could show the public and move the city forward. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, if uh, the private sector and government isn't thinking about how to uh, make your workers and employees uh, 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 productive in this mm -hmm. environment in a tough situation and giving them the resources, and that means flexible environments, um, you're not going to see a lot of progress and you're ultimately going to see workers leaving here that can. So we want to keep our best employees and that means that we got to create a good work environment for them. Moving on from schools right now, I want to ask you about Tuesday night's police involved shooting. You took a yeah. very bold stance, defended those officers actions right off the bat, despite all the controversial police shootings happening across the country. I want to ask why you specifically did that and where the investigation yes. stands now. You know, 
Look, over the last couple of years, I think I have a very strong track record on disciplining police officers. I've fired police officers probably more than anybody in New Jersey when they're wrong. But at the same time, when there is justified use of force, it's important that you're clear about that. Um, I certainly recognize the politics and, and the conversation that's happening nationally, which is productive. And we should have a conversation around what policing looks like going forward. But at the same time, it's important that people recognize that a pillar of a livable community is a safe community. And that also means that every Every time that the police use force, it doesn't mean that it's unjustified or irresponsible. There are justified uses of force. And in the case on Tuesday, uh, an individual had a loaded illegal handgun and raised it in the direction of a police officer, mm -hmm. and he fired. And in, in my view, as I said that night, that's justified, um, and the officer felt that he was at risk. Uh, okay. Mayor Phillip, I appreciate your time this morning. We are out of time. Next time you come on, I Thank want to you. talk about this proposal you have for a four-day work week. I want to see if it's getting right. any traction. Any traction? Happy to talk about it. Yeah, of course. All right. Is it happening? It is happening. I mean, the ones that want to work four days, we're giving them that flexibility as well, in addition to the ones that want to work entirely remotely. So it's working. We're trying our best to be a thoughtful employer of our 3,000 employees. All right. Well, scratching the surface there. We'll talk more about it next time. Mayor Full, appreciate right. your time this Thank morning. You. Okay.